So with the 76ers win, the East playoff bracket is now just about complete. We know the 76ers will be taking on the seventh seeded they will be the seventh seed, rather, to face the New York Knicks. And the Heat, meanwhile, they will host the Bulls with the winner moving on to face the Celtics as the eighth seed. We're going to get an update on the health of Jimmy Butler in just a minute here. But Austin, Kendrick Perkins has been adamant that Joel Embiid should not have come back unless he was 100%. I was watching him last night, and I just kept thinking, man, he doesn't seem to have the burst. He doesn't seem to have the lift. And if he hadn't made those two big threes down the stretch, we might be having a very different conversation today. Does he look right to you? He definitely doesn't look 100% um, to your point, Malika. And I'll even add on, if, if Nicholas Batum didn't have a great game, I don't even think we were, you know, Philly's season would you know, essentially be a lot different. Um, they would be obviously playing, was it tomorrow night? Um, right. So, listen, I, I'm, I have a huge amount of respect for this guy coming back. Um, you know, he wanted to play. A lot of people said he wasn't going to come back. There was no need for him to come back. you you got to admire a competitor and an MVP caliber player, a former MVP winner, and probably would have won this year if he hadn't missed so many games. Uh, wanting to play and perform and help his team. We always rave about stars sitting out, and here we got here we have a guy playing through injuries, uh, which is admirable. With that being said, if you're asking me, does he look 100 percent? The answer is no. We saw yeah. him, you know, last game. He was hobbling towards the back end of the game. He was struggling, really just you could see his explosion, uh, his trust in, in his footwork, uh, the way he was running up and down the full floor, it looked like he was laboring that injury. Um, so you start asking yourself, if it was hard for him to manage through a play-in game, what expectations are there for him to be playing through an entire series, and not just versus anybody, but perhaps the most physical team in the Eastern Conference, let alone the NBA, the New York Knicks, and a defensive-minded coach, Tom Thibodeau, who's going to be throwing right. uh, a plethora of schemes to slow him down and guard him. You know, And this isn't the guy they throw the ball to every once in a while or every other two plays. Joel Embiid touches the ball every single time he touches down the floor. And that is by design because without him, they don't have a chance of winning. Just like Miami's chances without Jimmy, he's even more essential to Philly. This is the MVP we're talking about here. Him and Maxi are the show, but he is the star. He is the Batman in that Robin duo. And you need a healthy him. And in my eyes, I wanted him to kind of go into the offseason, yeah. get fully healthy, no rush, give Maxi and all these guys more experience in the playoffs without him. Uh, and then they come back next year with an addition player because we know they have cap space. I thought Philly was one of those teams, as we all talked about, Malika, them being a really realistic contending team. Whereas yep. right now we're like seeing them limp into the playoffs with Joel Embiid not being 100%. It's very dangerous. So you, you start asking the risk reward here. What are we what are we doing? Right. Tim Bontemps, you, you were actually in the building uh, for this game yesterday. What did you see from Joel Embiid up close? I saw a star in Joel Embiid and a team in the Philadelphia 76ers that was going through the trauma of what's gone on in that building at the Wells Fargo Center the past three years. This is a place where in Game 7 three years ago, the Sixers blew a chance to go to the conference finals and lost that game to the Hawks when Ben Simmons obviously infamously passed up that dunk late in the game. Two years ago, they played the same Miami Heat in Game 6 in their building, saw their season end there. Last year, Game 6 against the Celtics, they're up. Same situation as last night. Six minutes to go in the fourth quarter. They have a lead. They've got a chance to go to the conference finals again. What do they do? They fall apart down the stretch. Joel Embiid doesn't get the ball. The Sixers don't win. They get routed in game seven. You guys are talking about, well, what if they didn't get the Nick Batum performance? What if they didn't get the Joel Embiid shots? Yeah. They got the plays down the stretch in that game. This is the thing that everybody's waited for the Sixers to do for a long time. And in being in the building last night, seeing the emotion and the intensity and the physicality of that game, there was a coach who texted me in the second half early in the third quarter and said, this feels like a game seven. And it felt like a game seven being there for the way both teams attack that game for all the reasons you guys are hitting around, right. which is that the winner of that game has a clear path to the East finals and the loser of that game either goes home tomorrow if they don't beat Chicago or they're staring a 1-8 matchup in the face against the Boston Celtics less than 48 hours later. And that is going to be an incredibly tall order for anybody to win. Oh, so certainly the game played out like both those teams knew what was at stake. And I thought for me, with the trauma the Sixers have gone through, that's not a game I'm not sure they win the last couple of years. And for them to pull it out down the stretch and for Joel Embiid to make several big shots, to make that pass to Kelly Uber out of the double team, to get it done down the stretch, I thought that mattered a lot more 
than what happened the first three and a half quarters. And to me, mm. it sets them up very nicely for this Knicks series, which is going to be incredibly physical, incredibly intense. But the Sixers got through the fire. They won that game. And I think it gave them a ton of confidence to come up big in moments they have simply, frankly, not done so in the past. Well, and we should point out, Tim, that Joel Embiid, he did play 38 minutes. It's the most he's played since he came back from injury. So that should say uh, at least something. But you mentioned this matchup now that the, the Heat have with the Chicago Bulls because just because they lost their season is not over. They do have one more shot. But Jimmy Butler is likely out, right, with his MCL injury. So what does this mean for Jimmy Butler and the Heat? Well, it means, Malika, that there's slim chances of repeating their miracle run from the eight seed to the NBA Finals last year have just gotten that much slimmer, right? Obviously, it was going to be an incredibly tall order for Miami, not just to beat the Chicago team, which, by the way, saw Kobe White go for 42 last night and smoked the Hawks and has played well down the stretch. Not only do they have to win that game, they then have to go to Boston and, again, less than 48 hours later, start that series against a Celtics team that has spent the last two months tuning up for the playoffs so obviously with no Jimmy it's going to require a ton more from Tyler Hero he struggled last night at 25 points but took 27 shots they're going to need a lot from Bam Adebayo we'll see if Duncan Robinson can play he didn't play last night though he was available with a recent back issue but right. as we all know the heat ride with how Jimmy Butler carries them and right now it does not look great for his chances to play in this game on Friday night. So the seventh seeded 76ers, say that a couple times fast, are minus 110 to beat the Knicks in their series. It's the second shortest odds for a seven or eight seed in the playoff series in at least the last 35 seasons. The only team with shorter odds was the 2021 Lakers who lost in round one to the Suns. So Austin is back with me and look who decided to join us today. He is big time now. He is the honorary mayor of New York City, so he is setting his own schedule what time, time he shows up to the show but we get to start with 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 you Kendrick honorary mayor of New York mm -hmm. who is the better 1A yeah. is it Jalen Brunson or is it Joel Embiid Oh, Jalen Brunson is a 1A now, huh? Well, well, well I'll be there. Right, what I'll happened over the I'll last couple months? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, yeah, what happened over the last couple months for him to for him to be able to call a 1A? I'm gonna tell you what happened over the last couple months. Since the All-Star break, he's been the best player in the Eastern Conference. Since the over the last 10 games, the man has been averaging over 37 points per game. When I think about Jalen Brunson and what he brings to the table, is he a game changer? Hell yeah. Is he a game manager? Hell yeah. But is he a leader? Yes, he is. And when it comes down to him leading the charge at the head of the snake, all the rest, the rest of the guys follow. So when I look at a guy like OG Ananobi, who's, by the way, back and healthy, back in the lineup, and we know how dangerous they are defensively when he's in the lineup. When I'm looking at a Joel Embiid, Last night, I'm watching him. He's struggling to get up and down the court. He's struggling with his lateral movement. And I love the breakdown by Tim Legler. He's the GOAT when it comes down to that iPad. But he showed clips against Miami. He didn't show clips against a Tom Thibodeau team that's going to be real, well prepared defensively and ready to go. That Nick fan base is going to be fired up. The Garden is going to be rocking. Jalen Brunson has it on his mind. They know that they're the underdogs in this series. They know that they, they have been disrespected all season long. And damn it, he's going to come with it and the Knicks are coming with it. I got Jalen Brunson. I mean, listen, Perk's not saying anything wrong just from the aspect of Jalen Brunson proving everybody wrong. Even we go back to his contract now, it looks like it's it's he's underpaid. Uh, this guy is a superstar. You know, Becky's comments about him obviously have not aged well. He is a 1A player. Um, he is a team, a player that can can lead a team, as we've seen, averaging 37 points, uh, you know, over the span of games in which he has. It's extremely impressive. If we're talking about this series, Perk, I'm okay with you saying Brunson due to the to the injuries of Joel Embiid, but let's not act like we you would ever put Brunson over Joel Embiid ever if 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 if, if he was fully healthy. And even then, he played 38 minutes. He had 23 and 15. It was his first time playing that many minutes. He's going to be getting treatment today. He's going to be getting treatment tomorrow. He's going to be getting ready for this series. Uh, Joel Embiid is the best player in this series. He still is. Uh, even with the career year that Jalen Brunson has had, no one had him in the MVP conversation, seriously. If we're talking top three in MVP voting, his name was not on that list, Pert. Joel Embiid was not only not on the list, he was number one when he was healthy. Now, I understand when he was healthy, but at the end of the day, he's playing. And I expect Joel Embiid to dominate. 
I expect him to still be the best player in this series. If he's going to play, then you are going to play. No one cares about the injuries. No one's going to use it as an excuse for him. When you play, you play. There's nobody on the floor better than Joel Embiid in this series. Nobody. Period. Oh, Austin. You know this. Austin, did, did you watch? Did you watch? I don't know nothing. Did you watch the game last night? Yes, you do. Did you watch the game last night? Huh? Okay, did you watch the game I watched the game. The game. He night? was laboring towards the fourth. Oh, yes, I saw oh, it. I saw it. He, 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 okay, so so don't act like what we're all saying here is not a real thing when it comes down to his knee and his health. And in a couple of days, it's not going to magically that. get to where he's 100. That's why I'm not picking Joel and B. Because that. we know that he's I not. I get that. He, Austin, listen, listen, calm down. You turn to red. I'm just having a conversation with you. Here's the thing that I'm telling you. I the thing that, that I'm saying is, if Joe, if, if if Joel if Joel and B was a hundred percent, yes, I would take Joel and B. If Joel and B was ninety percent, yes, I would take Joel and B. If Joel and B was eighty percent, yes, I will take Joel and B. Joel and B is nowhere okay, close to that, Austin. He had he hold on. Okay, he has good. zero dunks. Hold on, listen to me. He has zero dunks since returning from the injury. That means that his lift is not there. We know, you know this as well as I know this. You have been in the film room with Tom Thibodeau when you was wet behind the ears, like Stephen A. say, breath smeller like Similac. When you was in my locker saying, hey, big perk, big bro, what's going on? When you still in high school, you know what Tom Thibodeau do in that film room. You know that he's going to have those guys ready. You know that Joel Embiid has to be at his best to be able to match the physicality of what Hardenstein and Mitchell Robinson is going to bring to the so, table. That's why I'm picking Jalen Brunson. I think you guys are actually saying the same thing in a roundabout way. That's why Austin said, yeah, all right, all right, bet. But, Perk, you were saying you missed the A block, so we, Austin and I have talked about, you said it the, <laughs> earlier this season that you, sh you didn't think that Joel Embiid should come back at all. And Lisa Salter said yesterday he feels, he's, he told her he feels 70 to 80%. So now that you've seen what 70 to 80% looks like in just a play-in game, do you agree with, do you, do you still stand on that sentiment, or do you think that it's he should have come back. I, I've seen him buckle twice. One time he had to leave the game. And look, what this is my thing. Come back to, to do what? The, the reason that I'm saying this is you want Joel Embiid at his best, right? When I look at the Philadelphia 76ers in the Eastern Conference, it's time for them to really make some noise. And when I say make some noise, conference finals at the bare minimum. They're not getting to the conference finals with Joel Embiid looking the way he looked. He's going to get to the free throw line. He's going to get his shot attempts from the mid-range because he has a guy like Tyrese Maxey to right. set the table, and he has mastered the mid-range shot. But in order to get where they're really trying to go, you need Joel Embiid 100. Absolutely. So I still stand on what I stand.